we jump the chicane for one last time, come through the final corner to take our first official win. Hey guys, what's up? Red Actions here and welcome back to this brand new video. And for this weekend, we are back in Denmark at the Copenhagen go-kart track for round four of the Danish Rotax Max Challenge. So yeah, this is only our second Rotax race of the year, all the way in August, so I really haven't done much Rotax this year. But don't worry, there's plenty of Rotax races coming and this is the first one of the long streak that we will have. So yeah, if you guys remember back to last year, we were here as well, but we had some uh, slight problems, let's say that. This year, however, I feel like we uh, have our engine in order much better than last year, so uh, let's hope it uh, keeps working, because actually the speed wasn't too bad when we were here last time. All right guys, the car is ready, we are all ready to go, and I think we can go out in about 40 minutes. And uh, yeah, looking forward to driving here again, crazy track, let's see how it goes. Welcome back guys to Copenhagen's Go Kart Bane in the capital city of Denmark. We are here racing in the Danish Rotax Max Challenge after pretty much doing nothing but four stroke racing this year. It feels good to be back in the Rotax powered car and also to be back at this insane track. Let's quickly have a look at what it is like. The run to turn 1 is short, a flat out blast which drops down to the right onto the second straight. Break hard for turn 2, a late apex hairpin to the right. Be careful not to take too much exit curb as you now bring over the cards to the right for turn 3. A double apex left hairpin which is rapidly followed by turns 4, 5 and 6. Take a lot of speed with you going into turn 7, early on the throttle and keep it flat through the chicane. Avoid the curbs and flow the cart onto the final right hand corner and that concludes the lap of Copenhagen right here. This track really is a relic of the past in modern day karting. Short, tight, bumpy but in no way slow. We only have a 28 second lap time and 700 meters of track length, which is only half of a modern track like Genk. This type of track is considered old school, as most tracks back in the 70s and 80s were built like this. Personally, I like tracks that have a bit of character like this. One thing that I immediately noticed in this first session is the insane amount of grip on the track. The asphalt here is quite rough, which means more rubber from the tires sticks to the surface. That black racing line you see on the track? It's actually rubber laid down by all of the cars driving on it. With the track being open all week and lots of days testing here since Monday, the amount of rubber on the surface was crazy. High grip conditions have always been a struggle for me. I have a semi-aggressive driving style. I like to attack corners, take great apex speed, rotate the cart and get on the power aggressively. This style works really well in low grip conditions because the back end sliding a bit is manageable. It's not unlike how Kimi Raikkonen or Michael Schumacher drove their F1 cars back in the day. But when grip levels rise, my technique becomes less effective. In high grip, when the back end slides, the friction between the tires and the asphalt is so intense, it's almost like hitting the brakes. This kills your corner speed and forces the engine to work harder, ruining your corner exits. This phenomenon, known as bugging down, is a common lap time killer in karting. And my driving style was especially vulnerable to it. So it was our job to find a solution to this problem. In an effort to become faster, we decided to remove some grip from both the front and the back end of the kart in the next session. I thought this would help, but it actually made the kart feel less smooth. However, despite looking and feeling rough, the kart did feel faster. It wasn't gripping up too much like before and it was more slippery, allowing me to carry more speed into the slide. It may not look pretty, but I thought it was pretty effective. So right now we're about middle of the pack in terms of speed. We're definitely faster than the back markers, but we still need to find about 3 or 4 tenths to catch up with the faster drivers. A little bit later during the session, we were overtaken by the 390. A very fast driver who was actually on pole at this year's Rotax Max International Trophy. You can see he is still a bit faster than us, especially in the high speed corners, where he pulls away quite a bit. In the next session we focused on my driving instead of making more setup changes, since I was still sliding too much. But the card felt strange, and that's when we discovered a puncture, which turned out to be caused by a cracked rim. We'll need to replace it, but fortunately I know just the place. K Racing has been a long time supporter of the channel and the reason I'm racing in Denmark. Their webshop offers every Rotax Max and OTK part you need, plus extras like gloves, suits and other accessories. Check out their site and use the code RED at checkout for 5% off your order. Save some money and support me and my sponsor by shopping at kracingshop.com. For the next session, we fixed the puncture, put on new tires and swapped in our race engine. We also made a radical setup change. We added lots of grip to the front while keeping the back end the same. This made the front end very responsive and pointy and the rear very slidey. A slidey back end might sound bad, but it actually helps the car rotate quicker without slowing us down. 
We also changed the sprockets, dropping about 4 teeth on the rear. This should give us more top speed but less acceleration. However, with these Rotex engines it's not that simple. Most of the power is in the mid rev range, so by making the gearing longer, we stay in that optimal RPM range for longer. These changes made the cart harder to drive, but once you got used to it, it definitely worked. We were now only about 2 tenths off of the fastest drivers, but 2 tenths off on a tiny track like this means that we are actually in the midfield. In the last session of the day, we ran into a new problem. The rear end became very unstable in high speed corners. This was probably because we were using a short axle, which reduces grip at the rear. You can see this when we're behind the 329. They pull away slightly in the fast corners because I just can't carry as much speed due to the lack of rear grip. However, in slow corners, the short axle really helps. It makes the cart more agile and light on the rotation, allowing us to gain some time on the 329. If we could somehow make the cart more stable in the fast corners without losing that agility in the slow ones, that would be a huge win. But that's something to work on for tomorrow because today's sessions are done. Alright guys, that was the day and we ended at this crazy American car event back in Roskilde. Yeah, the day was a bit weird to be honest. Um, I feel like we constantly had problems with the sliding rear end. Um, yeah, we're about midfield pace um, and we definitely need to find some more time because uh, if we find about two tenths, we will be like easily within the top ten. So tomorrow, new day. We tried some new things with the setup, and uh, let's see if it works. I'm going to enjoy this American car show, and uh, I'll show you the best bits. Alright guys, practice is over, um, Yeah, I think we ended it pretty good there, managed to get P8 in the last practice session after uh, fiddling with the setup uh, a long time. We were not using new tires, some of the people were, so I think we will go forward a little bit more in the qualifying, but uh, we'll find that out shortly. Alright, so we're now on our way to the briefing, and I have a bunch of idiots behind me. <laughs> so the briefing is in Danish, I don't speak Danish, so I don't understand the thing, so yeah. Alright guys, welcome to the first of four qualifying heats. These are just four short sprint races which will decide your grip position for the pre-final. So let's say that I would win three heats and get a DNF in the fourth heat, we would start around, let's say, P5 for the pre-final. So if you get some nice and consistent results across these four heats, we will secure a good starting position for the pre-final. And just for good measure guys, this is me. The one with the white front bumper and the bright orange helmet. After qualifying, our starting position for the heats is P7, so that means we'll be starting in P7 for every single heat. The first one is about to get on the way though, 5 red lights and away we go. Of course we started on the inside line, which massively benefits us for both the first and second corners. By keeping our nose clean and having our elbows out, we got ourselves up to P4 after the first few corners. That little incident behind us means that we have quite a big gap to the cars behind, which gives us less pressure from behind and allows us to fully focus on the top 3 cars ahead of us. So once again we find ourselves having an amazing start this season, gaining 3 places and now we are even keeping up with P3. I actually think that this is our true pace, as in qualifying I made a slight mistake by aborting my quali run too early. I actually came into the pits whilst the track was still getting quicker and quicker, which means quali gave us not the right indication of our speed. As we now fast forward a few laps we can clearly see that we are all over the driver in P3 and keeping very very close. Maybe if we can keep this close we could mount an attack somewhere around the lap. Of course, overtaking here is quite difficult, especially when it comes to overtaking one of the RS competition drivers, like the one right in front of us. RS competition is pretty much the biggest team in Denmark and they are also one of the best. And they also found that running really low gearing seemed to be working very good around this track. So they had really really good top speed, which made overtaking harder. Unfortunately though, we were not able to keep up with the top 3 afterwards, and coming onto the last lap we find ourselves in no man's land, but the driver behind us, Knut Nielsen, from RS Competition was absolutely charging through the field after that lap 1 incident. He was much faster than us, but luckily for us, the gap was just too big to close up in the last lap and we bring it home in P4 for the first heat, which actually means that this is one of our best Rotex races to date. Let's quickly move on to the second and last heat of the Saturday. 
Again we are starting in P7 on the inside, 5 red lights and away we go. This time our getaway isn't as great as before, so we get the elbows out in turn 2 and now find ourselves in P5. So not a great start this season. One guy tries to have a look around the outside there, but at this track there's really only one or two overtaking opportunities and neither of those include going around the outside of turn 3. Anyways, now that the dust from the start phase settled, it became clear that our pace in this heat wasn't as good as in the first one. In these professional kart races the track is constantly evolving and changing, getting either better or worse. I struggle to adjust my driving accordingly though and we get overtaken by Knud Nielsen there and a few laps later also by Emil Heinberger. Yes, that's his roommate. Once that happened the pace seemed to get a little bit better and we could stay on the bumper of Hamburger for P7 for basically the entire race. Anyways, after the last lap is completed, P7 it is for the second qualifying heat. Two decent results which will definitely help our starting position for tomorrow. Alright guys, that is the first day done. Um, um, yeah, pretty good, uh, pretty solid. Uh, qualifying was good, uh, first heat was amazing. And then the second heat, uh, yeah, we tried something with the tire pressure, it didn't really work out, we lost a few positions after a really good start. But yeah, I think that is one of the most solid days of my uh, Rotex career so far, which is uh, nice. So now it's time to just clean everything, have some food, and uh, I'm actually going to show you what the cleaning looks like right now. Alright guys, we're jumping straight into Heat 3 on Sunday. The weather was absolutely crazy, wet, dry, wet, dry, which meant that we constantly had to change the setup and I did not have time to vlog unfortunately. We ended up with a dry setup again since the track was pretty much dry. Anyways, enough yapping from me, 5 red lights are on and away we go. We get a good initial getaway, getting up to P6 already and after turn 2 we once again find ourselves in P4. We have a little bit of a moment here with the driver in P3 which holds us all up and allows the top 3 to get away. A few laps later though, we have Knut Nielsen right behind us once again. And this time he is again a lot faster than us. He has been lightning quick all weekend and we have been a bit up and down. In the first heat we were just fast enough to keep him behind but now we don't quite have the pace. A few laps later we again get overtaken and we are now down to P7. At the end of the race we actually had this train forming behind us. And unlike in most of the weekend we were now actually pretty quick in the fast corners. I didn't expect this however and I defended every lap going into turn 2, even though this was definitely not necessary. Taking that defensive line massively hurt my lap times and all of the advantage I had in the fast corners with that low sprocket were instantly neutralized by the fact that I got such a bad exit from defending in turn 2. And you can see that every lap I kept them in the fast corners and they catch right back up at turn 2. Still though, I managed to hold on to P7, so that's 1 P4 and 2 P7s. One more heat to go before we know our starting position for the pre-final. Well guys, in between heats 3 and 4 the weather decided to once again have an aneurysm and change from wet to dry every 5 seconds. In that chaos we ended up going to the track with a full wet setup but with slick tires bolted on. Now most guys were on a full dry setup even though there are still quite some wet spots on the track. So this race would be very interesting to see. Anyways, 5 red lights are out now and away we go. You can just see how slippery it is in that first corner and how poor our initial getaway is. Luckily we have the inside for the first corner as chaos ensues around us, multiple drivers going off and we somehow find ourselves in P4 once again. Sometimes hanging back and making sure you stay on the track is the best option. Just like in this heat. Going through the middle sector you can really see how wet it still is. And that is great news for us rocking the high grip and high acceleration setup. Unfortunately once we get to the dry and fast bits of the track, the card setup is completely wrong and we lose absolutely huge amounts of time. The blue card behind us has so much more top speed that he can easily overtake us on the straight here which drops us down to P5 and almost P6 even. But now comes the slow bit and we are just so much faster that when exiting turn 3 we absolutely send it up the inside into the next corner and reclaim P4 for now. One thing that would be an issue though is the track drying. As the track dries our setup becomes worse and worse, so it's important that we take action right now. We managed to keep P4 for quite a while and even close up on the two drivers ahead. The 390 goes for a move there up the inside of Mr. Hamburger, which makes them both lose a lot of time and puts him right in our crosshairs. We know we are strong in this technical bit, so when we exit turn 3, we again send it up the inside going into the next corner, proving the naysayers wrong who claim you can't overtake in Copenhagen's middle sector. Now it was a matter of keeping our track position for a few more laps whilst the track gets increasingly more against our setup. We try our best for a while, but we are just no match for the dry setup runners on the straights. Hamburger overtakes us going into turn 1, dropping us back to P4, where we actually stayed until the end of the race. 
It was really difficult to nurse this setup to the end of the latter parts of this race. We had a big advantage in the wet bits initially, but as the track dried up, so did our advantage. Still quite happy with that P4 though. So we got 4th twice and 7th twice in the heats. And somehow that gave us a starting position of P4 for the pre-final. However, Mother Nature had another trick up her sleeve. Those were the heats. Yeah, in the first heat we struggled a little bit. Uh, in the second heat went really well again, we got P4. Uh, the track got dry, but uh, we were on a full wet setup, so we went back a little bit at the end. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We are starting in P4 for the pre-final, and... Um, I think it's quite wet, so uh, that means uh, wet setup. Luckily, I have a very good mechanic who is working on the cars. Well, what is your opinion on, on, the, on the rain? I like it because it's way too hot when it's uh, dry. Yep. I sweat. So yeah, let's have a look outside. It's raining a bit, but not enough, uh, not enough to keep it like fully wet, but also not enough to dry. So it's going to be tight, I think. Anyway, fingers crossed. Let's see if we can get that uh, top five result and uh, get home a trophy. All right, guys, time for the pre-final. The first race of the weekend that actually matters for the championship, and we are starting in P freaking four, the best grip position I ever had in an official Rotex Max Challenge race. The conditions are in our favor. Let's see what we can do. We roll into the tram lines. Five lads are out now and away we go. We use the outside line to take a different line, slingshot back to the inside for turn two, lay down the brakes and boom, P2 it is. It doesn't matter where you put me on the grid. I always make up positions at the start. And this time we also have a nice gap to the cards behind. Let's get our head down and try to find the correct lines around this track. Because actually, I have never driven this track in the wet before. You can see that we are kind of able to stay with the guy in P1 for quite a while. However, you can see that he is pretty weak in some of the corner exits and we actually have a little bit of a look up the inside here for the lead, but no, it has to wait for now. We are looking very racy, guys. We are all over Vilat Lindeskov and we are currently setting purple lap times. We can win this race if we plan our attacks well. Going on to lap 5 now, we are still all over Lindeskov here as he now makes a little bit of a mistake, allowing us to pull alongside, keep the inside for the next corner and we got it boys, P1, let's go. This is the first time that I am in the lead of an official RMC race and what a better way to do it than at a track I barely raced at and never done a single lap at in the rain. But let's not get too excited for now, getting the lead is one thing, but staying in the lead is a completely other thing. Especially after Knut Nielsen manages to barge his way past Lindeskov. So we now have one of the fastest drivers in not only in Denmark, but the entirety of Europe chasing us down at one of the tracks he knows like the back of his hand. Things are not looking too good for us here boys. A few laps later he's basically right up my ass and you can see that he is a lot faster through the corners here at the back of the track. I decided to try a different line through them as I just didn't know what would be the fastest way around. But as it turned out my line was a lot slower than Knut. He stayed right with us for most of the race. But as we enter the closing stages I tried taking Knut's line. And after that people it turns out miracles do happen. We start capping him like crazy. And going into the last lap we are comfortably leading this race. We have been strong in the wet for years, but every time there was something that went wrong preventing us from taking a good result. In this race however, luck was on our side. We planned our overtake perfectly and didn't put a foot wrong. We are about to beat some of the best drivers in Denmark and all of Europe in their own backyard. We jump the chicane for one last time, come to the final corner to take our first official win in Senior Rotax and what a way to do it. I really can't make this stuff up. I really can't make this stuff up. For the second time in a row, we get stripped of a win due to a penalty. And what did we get it for? Well, we got the penalty for our move on Lindeskov for the lead of the race. If we take a look here at a different camera angle, the steward said that they found my move to be intimidating and aggressive and decided to give me a 3 second time penalty for it. Personally, I really don't understand why I got the penalty. Anyways, there's nothing we can do about it but focus on the final, in which we are starting from P3. So time for the final, the one race that really counts. The result you get in this one is the final result of the weekend. So if we want to win this event, we need to win this final. For the last time this weekend in Copenhagen, starting in P3, we roll out onto the drum lines, five red lights are out now and away we go, diving to the inside immediately as chaos ensues behind us. We got safely through however and we are now in P2. There is just one more card standing between us and that sweet victory and it's a 390 of Knut Nielsen. This time the rules are reversed however, with us in P2 chasing down Knut in P1. One thing that is also different from the pre-final is the weather. In the chaotic weather that followed after the pre-final, the track got considerably more wet than before. And we unfortunately didn't think about adjusting the setup accordingly 
and we are on the exact same setup and more importantly, tire pressure as in the pre-final. And with our Mojo W5 tires, it's very important to have enough air in all four tires to have enough heat and grip in the tires. Unfortunately, the track got more wet between the pre-final and the final, and we were still rocking the lower pressures from the dryer pre-final. So this time, I was massively struggling. You can see that in the first few laps, Knut just absolutely bolted into the distance. He probably did gamble on the right tire pressures. I knew that the drier the track got, the faster we would be compared to the rest, and faster we did get because in the last lap we actually set the fastest lap of the race. It's too little too late however, and Knut's lead is just too big for us to try anything. Everything went right for them, but for us unfortunately, we forgot one of the most important things, that being the tire pressure. Still, we come across the line to take P2 in what is now officially my best Rotex Max Challenge weekend to date. Is it legal? Yeah. yeah. I hope so too. Guys, it's 100% legal. We got P2. Well guys, we did it. P2, G freaking G. Check out this video on screen right here. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.